All right, so, so the dominating answer is half as much. So, uh, a lot of you already know that the size of the system is really important. If I add the same amount of energy to half the size of the system, then each piece of that system, each atom or each molecule, whatever, gets twice as much of an energy change. And so its temperature will change twice as much. Now, that's for the smaller system. For the larger system, the temperature changes half as much as the smaller. Um, that intuition is, is exactly played out in the equations that you'll use. You've probably seen these equations before. Thermal energy changes depend on temperature changes. And the proportionality constant depends on the material. So you look up the specific heat capacity of the material, but it also depends on the mass of the object. Yeah? What if you say you're you're starting with ice at zero and you put in just enough energy so that the larger chunk melts completely and it's liquid at zero? So make your smaller chunk of ice at a temperature greater than zero. So I in other words I didn't say ignore phase changes. Is that what you're... Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'll give you that. What did you answer? Okay. I would Okay. You know, I, I should have said uh, uh, no phase changes for either thing because I, I really meant it and just forgot to say it. That's the whole problem with asking questions. If I make the question long enough by saying all the things that I don't want you to consider, then, uh, every, then it's not nearly as interesting a question. So that's a good point. Um, changes in thermal energy. If the mass of the object is twice as big and the thermal energy change is the same, then the temperature change has to be half as much. That's what this thing tells you. Similar kinds of issues with chemical bond changes. So you're going to use these equations. I'll post them. You'll use them. Uh, you probably recognize some of them. You'll use them this week. I want to ask one more question, so I'm going to. I throw a ball straight up into the air. So this is what I want you to talk about. Here's the ball, here's my hand, there's the floor. I throw a ball straight up into the air. I don't catch it. It comes down below my hand, hits the floor. My question for you, at which point is the kinetic energy of the ball the largest? Just after the ball leaves my hand when it's headed up? At the top of the path? Just before the ball hits the ground? which is down there, or, at all, or it's the same at all three points, or A and C.